If you were going to go visit every planet in the solar system, where would you go first? And why would you even go? For me, I think the answer to that is pretty simple. I'd go to the moon first. It's not a planet, but if you can't make it to the moon, you're not going to make it anywhere else in space. Plus, I'm curious what it would be like to be there as a human, as an Earthling. I'd go sometime when I felt like I needed an escape or a, a great perspective finding on all the messiness and confusion of life on Earth. Now, Neil and Buzz might have had a Saturn V rocket, but today we're going to head to the moon in the only way that I know how. We're going to take my Prius. sky, this big blue sky that we all live under, it seems so vast, so ridiculously infinite, and yet it's only 60 miles up. It takes only an hour to drive from the surface to the top. You know, this warm blanket that keeps us all protected from the vacuum and radiation of space is a lot more like a plastic wrap than it is a blanket. Even so, it isn't easy to leave it. It takes a lot more than 60 miles an hour to stay up and away from the Earth. Sometimes you gotta just change your relationship with gravity. Run away so fast towards the horizon that no longer are you falling to ground by the Earth's gravity. Now you're falling around it. And the view from up there is like nothing else you'll ever see. This is awesome! Oh my god! Okay. Right after you enter the orbit of the moon, just as you've begun making friends with the darkness, you might spot something unusual out there on the horizon. Something so bright it seems like it must be the sun, but then it's blue. When you see your first Earthrise, you might notice how it's similar to moonrise, but it's bigger, brighter, and bluer. Earth reflects over 50% more light than the moon's rough and dark surface. And it's often four times bigger in the lunar sky than the moon is in the Earth's sky. Like your first time seeing a magnificent night sky or catching glances of someone you fall in love with. What do you even say? first humans around the backside of the moon, the astronauts of Apollo 8, had this to say. Oh my god, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, isn't that pretty? 
Hey, don't take that. It's not scheduled. <laughs> you got a color film, Jim? Hand me a roll of color quick. Oh, man. That's crazy. Where is it? Quick. Down here. Just grab me a color. A color exterior. There you go. That one? Yeah, I'm looking for one. Anything. Quick. Hey, I've got it right here. Let me get up. This is a lot clearer. No, I got a frame that's very clear right here. Got it? Yep. Take the thermal. Take the thermal up here. Wait a minute, let me get the right setting. Okay, calm down. Oh, I got a right. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. <laughs> Their stress about missing the shot tells us how it must have felt to see it. Their first instinct was to share it. Grab a roll of color film and snap this photo of all of us. Every form of life we know of back home. You sure we got it now? Yeah, we'll get well come up again. You know, the first Earthrise anyone ever saw? was actually a picture from the Lunar Orbiter 1 spacecraft. But we only really felt the significance of it when we went to see it with our own two Earthling eyes. The same thing is true for the lunar surface. The first robotic craft that ever landed on the moon was the Soviet Luna 9, sending back this incredible black and white panorama surface. But the real value of landing on the moon didn't come from robotic landers. It came in sending humans to explore there. place Earthlings made it past their home planet. A lot of the metals are still intact here, including the plaque behind the lander's ladder. The flag looks like it's probably totally dissolved by now because of solar radiation. But the footprints, these will remain here for millennia, if not tens of thousands of years, as long as some space tourist doesn't rake over them. But if these footprints can remain intact for tens of thousands of years, it's not just the footprints the moon's keeping intact. It's this whole landscape, as far as the eye can see. It's this whole moon. This place is beyond any idea, conception we have of ancient. And for as long as this place remains, Primordial, it'll continue to hold the stories of how we came to be. We've learned a lot already, but there's still so many stories left to listen to here. Why is it we feel so compelled as humans to run into the unknown, to run towards a void? to get out and beyond home. Is it something instinctive, like the way that salmon have to swim upstream, or is it something beyond that? I think whatever it is, it always brings us back home in a new way, it, because we've gone and seen where we've left from, from a new perspective. We're left with no choice but to remember incredible truth that all of this exists in the first place. The magic of that makes the whole trip worth it. Happy Moon Day! Today is the 53rd anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing. And I'm so excited to be releasing this video today. 
What you just watched is an abridged cut of a much longer series of videos that doesn't just go and look at the moon, but also goes to every other planet in the solar system and explores them in deep dive detail in the planetary science and geology of the planets in the solar system. Now, needless to say, that's a huge task to take on for one person. So I've spent the last six months developing all kinds of software tools that will help me actually develop the series in a short period of time. For instance, all the terrain that you saw of the lunar surface was taken directly from massive NASA data sets and brought into the Unreal Engine in order to visualize them in the most realistic and fastest way that's possible right now. All of this development and this video you just watched has been made possible by viewers like you over on the Patreon page. For as little as giving $1 a month, you can get access to the behind the scenes footage of how this video is made, work in progress, early cuts of the series as I make it, as well as some of the software tools that I've developed in order to make all this possible. But if you can't give to the Patreon to support the channel, the next best way is to just share this video with someone that you think would really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll see you in the universe.